Welcome to episode three of Spotlight with Renee Holder. I am your host, and I am so glad you are here. My guest today is an old classmate of mine from the University of Toronto, who made a name for himself as an accomplished actor of stage, TV, and film. I am always amazed when I see this man in action. He's dynamic, he's intense, he's passionate, but most of all, he's hilarious. I am so proud to welcome to the spotlight my friend, Tony Napo. Tony! Hey! <laughs> I didn't hear you. I thought I was going to hear you, but I didn't. How are you? Welcome to the show, my friend. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Scarborough! Yeah, no. Scarborough! Scar <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so true. It's so true. It's been so long. Um, yeah. it's, so, it's so funny because I've been tracking you on Facebook. Thank goodness we're all friends there. So I've been yeah. able to see uh, your it's, work. It's so the best. The best yeah, time. isn't it? I think it's the best. We're totally I'm getting with it. Any, I'm in touch with basically everybody in my entire life I want to be in touch with. Right. Isn't it true? I think it's the greatest thing. It's so funny. So with all the craziness happening with Facebook people are like get rid of it we want to get out of it it's just like sure. if they had a better a, another platform sure but it's like where all my people are all my pictures are where absolutely all my, absolutely yeah so I yeah always, I totally and I it. tell my daughter like you know I always think this is this is what I'm leaving behind mm -hmm. you know this yeah. is a way to sort of document and uh, and uh, and leave that you yeah, exactly know, leave as much of myself behind as I can yeah, and it's so funny. Specifically you, for her. Specifically yeah, exactly. for her. I'm not, and, I don't expect anyone else to give a shit when I'm not here. <laughs> but uh, she might be curious. But, but, it's, but it's those memories that come up every so often, right? You know, so yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm seeing the memories from last year when COVID would be we in lockdown. Yeah. And I was just seeing the post from last year. And it's just, I just love the memories because it's, yeah. uh, it's so Too bad we didn't have it while we were at school. Exactly. You know, remember, do you remember when we dated? <laughs> that I don't remember, John. Wow, it was magical. Then, it was magical. Apparently so. Yeah. Okay, before we jump in, what are you drinking? What are you uh, drinking? I, I've got a mixture of uh, Monster and the Grape Tang. Monster and Grape Tang. I've never heard of it, but uh, oh. but is, is, but but yes, okay. I, I like it. I like yeah. it. Um, I'm drinking a an afternoon cafe. It's been a long okay. day. Okay. Work today, so a little bit of smells, smells smells like vodka. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, <laughs> but yeah. So let me let's do a little cheers. cheers. Cheers to the cheers to the conversation, my friend. Thank you. Cheers to you. I mm. love you. Mm. I do love you. You are always like such a positive, wonderful force okay. and energy. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. my friend. I love you too. Yeah. I think you. I just think you're awesome, and I'm so glad we were able to maintain the friendship after all these yeah. years. I think that's what's, what's so great about Scarborough because yeah. Scarborough College, for those of us who aren't paying attention here, University of Toronto, um, because that little small group of us that, that connected back then yeah. could, could not talk for years and still be no. family, right? No. You know, I went back to Scarborough College not that long ago, maybe hey. five, five, six, seven years ago to film an episode of Flashpoint. Oh, and, nice. Uh, it's fucking beautiful now. That's what I heard. It's beautiful. When we were there, it was like a prison. Yeah, you know, which is a concrete, concrete prison. Prison. I see it on TV all the time. Yeah, it's always as a movie. As a prison. Or, yeah, or, you know, oh, okay, fut yeah. Futuristic whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we were there, there, was, there wasn't this lush, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the landscaping and greenery. It's, it's yeah. just a beautiful, beautiful place. When I went, um, I was, when I was in town the last time I drove over, I was hoping to go do like, just walk about, yeah. but um, it was just like, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out the parking situation. <laughs> I'm like, forget it. I'll come another day. Yeah. But yeah, all the new yeah. buildings going up, the new residents they're building. It's so huge and amazing. And remember, wow. we, we were like, the drama department was like, you had to go End? to the farthest corner yeah. in the basement. And yeah. it was like, you know, maybe 30, 40 people in the whole fucking program. Right. Uh, 
but uh, but we were family. We were no family. kidding, eh? That was yeah. so true. That was yeah. so true. And I, I think you know that that's like totally leads into, you know, how we know each other. So you know, we were both yes. in Scarborough College, University of Toronto, yeah, drama yeah. program. Yeah. Um, and it's so funny how I even got into drama because when I first joined U of T, I came in as finance, fi- finance, French, and computer science. Okay. Don't ask. Um, I think day one, day one, I was I, I got into the wrong computer science class. I got into the 201 class by accident. Yeah. And that set me off downhill from there. So I just switched. <laughs> yeah. So I switched in year two to okay. theater and music history. And so I was a, I was an English major. I was an oh, English major. Well, that, that, I, that, that I, lines I, up. I, you know, I secretly always loved drama and acting and movies and tv um but i really i really kind of signed up just to meet girls <laughs> <laughs> are you serious well I, I you know as an english major i thought oh, I'll, I'll play around here and see yeah what yeah it's yeah like, what it's like it'll probably be an easy credit right uh, and may, maybe i'll meet some girls that is hilarious um, yeah, but so, i have to ask you something i have to ask you something so you know in the studio um, the the drama studio, as Tony mentioned, end of the hallway, all the way to the end of the you know the the the, 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 the was it H wing yeah. or which which wing were we in? I think it was H. I don't know. I have no idea. You need I a think GPS was, to get there. Yeah, uh, yeah no kidding. Um, but the very first day, I remember our very first day of class, and we all had to you know find our way to the studio, yeah. and then to enter the studio, you had to walk over that door frame. And there was a okay. big sign, watch your step. And we're all sitting in the room. We're all green. We're all like shy and waiting for Miss Brown to do something crazy. And in comes Tony Napo, trips over the frame <laughs> and single-handedly created a lasting memory for all of us in the room. <laughs> so I always want to ask, did you mean to trip over for the comedy effect or I, did you I, actually trip? I actually don't remember that at all. <laughs> <laughs> at all. I tripped a lot. I've fallen a lot in my life. Oh, MG, yeah. we laughed. But it was hilarious because you were literally the class crowd right after that. So, uh, but it was but it was uh, a lasting memory, definitely for us. So you said that you went yeah. back um, just to visit. Yeah. Did you ever go back to see shows? No, I was, sh- I was shooting. A, I was oh, shooting no, you were shooting the film. Yeah, you were yeah. shooting the, the series. Um, yeah. No, no, I never went back. I never went back for anything wow. i mean I, I went i you know i dropped out of university mm-hmm. and went to new york and and went to a school there uh so i didn't you know i was i was kind of like a quitter who, who yeah. took off and honestly i was like drunk no you no you were not you were a quitter <laughs> you were impatient for your successful future well you know i mean <laughs> what what happened to me my story and i think you probably know it is uh kathy smith called me in her office one day and she said mm-hmm. what are you going to do with your life and I said, well, I'm going to be an English teacher. And she said, what about acting? And I said, oh, I really like it. It's fun. And she said, I'm going to tell you something I've only ever told one other person. If you actually study this, uh, I think you could probably make a living doing it for the rest of your life. And wow. so she gave, me the, she gave me the number of that other person to call and ask him about his experience. And we had a conversation. And at the end of that call, I decided I'm going to drop out and move to New York and go to this school. I did not know that. Yeah, and that other person was Enrico Colantoni, who was one of the leads on Flashpoint. He was on just shoot ah. and a lot of stuff. And, uh, and he was one, one of the leads on Flashpoint and he was there when I returned to Scarborough. That is funny. Yeah, yeah, to- uh, Look at that go, circle of life, the circle of life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, I, 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 I was, um, after I graduated and went off and did my career, I was at, it was in finance at the time. Um, what was his name? Um, was it Chris Forrest? Remember Chris Forrest? I don't know if you remember him. He was in the great. He was in the the year a couple of um, okay. years about before us. Shout out Chris Forrest. Um, uh, the, he had contacted me, found me uh, because I think in 1995 they created the like alumni theater group. Oh, cool. Okay. And um, so he was doing um, what's it? What you will or the twelfth night? Okay. But he was doing this adaptation of it where he wanted uh, he wanted me to come and sing. Like he was inter inter 
intersecting or sorry drop just just like yeah. adding songs like from the okay. 60s and i think 60s and 70s because he okay. loved the 60s into into the, and you could, the show you could sing like a motherfucker I remember you, singing. <laughs> You're so you and carla you and carla yeah that's right sing. man that was so much fun uh yeah. but yeah so he, he 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 gets me to come on and do the show and i was all the time i was like i'm not sure about this i don't know but i rehearsed with the guys but they had us singing from the rafters literally we were in the oh, lighting wow. up in the okay. up in, in the, the rafters yeah, yeah you know up up in the uh, up yeah up in the the lighting grid True. and we were singing from there so throughout the wow. show we would just be inter- like you know interposing That's a song cool. That's cool. yeah, yeah it was cool um, but I, it was so funny because I so didn't trust how it was going and how it would come yeah. off that I insisted that they put my stage name in the program. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I said, I don't know what this is going to be like, but I'm not sure what my real name connected with this. But yeah. it came off. It came off. It was it was really cool. It was fun. Cool. It was that fun. So thank, fun. Thanks, Chris, for sorry. Sorry for the uh, fake name. You know, you know, I have seen is Kevin Hobbs. I saw hey, him a couple, a few years back. Yeah. I went, to, I went to talk to a class at some school somewhere. I don't remember where. And somehow he was connected to it. And uh, oh, we wow. went for lunch and had a good talk. I love Because he was the shit in school. He was the shit, right? Yes. He uh, he played everything. He was great. No kidding. Was great. And it was really nice to see him. Yeah, it's it's great. It's great to, to I think um, when we Sue Monday shout out to Constable Sue Monday. Sue Monday. Um, yeah, yeah, I love Sue. She, yeah, so she I know she's seen him um, several times. So yeah. I, we've got to get the whole band back together at some point when yeah. COVID's all gone and I'm back in town. For sure, for sure. Yeah, so let's let's talk about let's talk about. You mentioned that you went to New York. What was first yeah. of all like? So you you speak with this 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 fellow. He says you know go for it. Yeah. Was it just pack your bags and go, or was it, hey, let me think about this? Well, I had, the I money. Had, I, yeah, was I had to audition. I auditioned for the school, um, which I later found out basically fucking anybody could get in as long as you could pay the <laughs> tuition. Uh, but and I remember the night before my audition, I was so nervous. I stayed mm. up all night and I watched uh, Raging Bull and Taxi Driver. Oh wow! I didn't sleep at all. I got up really early, or, or I stayed up around the clock. And, uh, and what I was the piece? Do you remember? I do. I remember one was uh, Eric Bogosian, you know, who was big at the time. And uh, and the other thing was David Mamick, which wow. you know, at the time, those were the guys. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and I got in and I thought it was a big deal. But then I got there and, you know, there were people who were like, they should not have been at acting school. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, but they have to fill the places and. At that time, it was like six thousand dollars to go there for tuition. Wow. Yeah, versus, yeah. Versus, I think it was fifteen hundred, fifteen hundred to get to U of T for per ah. term. Yeah, term yeah, or yeah. Sem- semester, whatever they call mm-hmm. it. But now it's like twenty fucking thousand. I can imagine to go there for a year. I can imagine. I'm like, who can afford that? You know, I I was dirt poor. I got mm-hmm. an OSAP loan, which mm-hmm. I paid back, but. Um, I don't know. It's it just feels like uh, it's it's not that accessible. Yeah. Any anymore. I don't. Well, maybe I don't, they want know. it to be. <laughs> I don't know. I'm old, so I don't really know uh-huh. how any anything works. But uh, yeah. But I think I think. What was it like there like, when you first got there, though? Was it like will you have a a, a new burst of excitement now? Going okay, this is what I want to do. Crazy. It was crazy. I was I was born and raised in Scarborough. I lived in a two bedroom apartment with, with my my parents and my sister. So I didn't even have a bedroom. We're so fucking poor. Everybody yeah. I knew was Scarborough. Everybody I knew thought Scarborough. Mm-hmm. I never thought I would want to leave Scarborough. And I get to New York and all of a sudden, here's the here's the whole world in a microcosm. You know, I right. never knew rich people. I never knew gay people. Or I never knew I knew gay people. Yeah. Um, uh, the whole world just kind of opened up to me and I realized how much I didn't know, you know, yeah. about about life, and uh, and then I just like I drank it up, you know. I uh, yeah. I went to school in the day and worked really hard, and at night I had a part time job selling tickets to theater, mm, nice. like Broadway and off Broadway. Yes. So we'd get comped into a lot of shows to see them, and uh, I saw a ton of theater. I, I saw imagine. 
I saw Larry Fishburne do August Wilson. I saw oh, wow. Al Pacino do um, nice. whatever the fuck it was, coffee, something about coffee, Chinese coffee. Mm. Alec Baldwin, Jessica Lang, Streetcar, like on and on and yes. on. John Turturro yeah. and Arturo. That's awesome. Uwe. Yeah. So it was a really balanced um, uh, education, you know, to, and, to and see so, it. And yeah. uh, all I did was think it and see it. And, that's awesome. I, I'm glad I, I'm glad I didn't go out of high school because I, I probably wouldn't have been ready. You know, yeah. I was drunk for two straight years at U of T. Wow. You wow. Know, you just, I didn't know. We did not know that. There's a pub and they don't take attendance. <laughs> 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 like, oh, all right, all right. Great. Oh, my uh, gosh. And we had a lot of fun. I mean, I yeah. did my work. But, yes. But I also uh, I also had a ton of fun. And, and when yeah. I went to New York, it was more. Did okay, you get down well, to brass tacks? Well, I mean, I had some fun there too, but but it was like I know what I'm here for, you know. At U of T, I never I never really knew what I was there for yeah. yet. You know, I was I was I was trying stuff out. I knew I loved English. I knew I loved the written word. Yeah. But um, but really uh, acting, I think it was just some secret desire I always yeah. had, and somehow Kathy gave me permission to uh, pursue it. Yeah, and I think that's that's the, the the beauty of when people you know drop something in your life that you don't even know that you had, which is like you know for me in my career, yes, it's been a you know a, a career career of uh, like you know corporate career, but yeah, there's stuff that because I'm a, I'm shy, I'm you know I think that theater class is what got me a little bit out of my shell, so that I sure. re- end sure. up becoming a persona when I do yeah. stuff, you know, when yeah. I became yeah. became a singer. Like I'm shy as all can be. I won't talk if you don't talk to me. But right. when I became a singer, then I was a performing. So the Renee the performer comes out. It's not Renee yeah. the girl at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Same thing when I did a couple of shows at U of T because I hated acting. Kathy knew it. Um, but I had to do a couple of the shows to get a grade. Um, and that's why I always ended up doing all the backstage. I did stage managing for the, the last four okay. years of university. But yeah, so I think I, it's- I, You should listen to me. And gone straight into supermodeling. Oh, you're so cute! Thank you, Tony. Well, yeah. well there's three. You, but there's three more. Like, there's three more like me. Um, my sisters. <laughs> so, and they're they're even prettier. So there you go. Um, you can but text, text me their numbers. <laughs> there, what, three of them are still single. Three of us are still single. Nice. Um, so there's hope. Um, but <laughs> yeah, no, I think it was. It's it's when people give you an opportunity to do something, or even sure. say, you know, you're yeah. really good at that. You're like, really? And yeah. it's really true. That gives yeah, you that because, impetus to move forward. I didn't grow up around, you know, I didn't know anybody who had ever done it. I didn't, it was too foreign, you know? Yeah. It, it's so foreign. I mean, and when I run into people and they're like, hey, you're on this or that. It's like, I think that's the thing that mm-hmm. makes it special to them is that yeah. it's just so foreign, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh but yeah, I, I, I. That's so awesome! I never knew that. I never knew it was Kathy who put that in you. Yeah, yeah, she That's changed awesome. my whole life. Yeah. So, t- so tell me about that first. Your first sort of experiences, like when you compare the U of T experience with drama, whatever you remember, and then you yeah. get into a real theater arts school. Well, and well, it was called the American Academy of the Dramatic American Arts. American or- Academy of Dramatic Arts. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's all we did. You know. Yeah. I mean, that that's one big difference is that mm-hmm. you know there's theater history there's voice there's movement there's scene study uh shakespeare like you know they they have all mm-hmm. the the classes versus you know we we did one, one, one drama class one right? hour a week or two hours a week yeah, maybe yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Was. that's um, awesome so it's and what, and what so was your first what, what was your first foray into you know doing something that you're getting paid for was it was it did you have to go through a whole bunch of comp stuff before you actually got that first gig well right out, right right out of school no mm-hmm. i didn't get an actor card. right out of school i was still in the states and uh i i auditioned for and got booked on a tour of the three musketeers oh wow. and, we, and we toured high school oh, and it was no like liter- literally the fucking uh, set was in the van we showed up we set it up and then we did this Three Musketeers show for high schools. And wow. the hook to the show was there was a bunch of scenes where you would do the scene 
and then they would play this like and strobe lights and you would walk backwards through your blocking and then do the scene in French. No I way. Think. Yeah. I luckily didn't have to do any of that. That but, uh, is But amazing. that was sort of the, the thrust of it. And, uh, you know, it was, it was kind of awesome. Like, mm -hmm. we went around and saw, I mean, the shows were shit. Uh, <laughs> but the people were great. And the kids loved it. And, uh, and I saw, like, half of the states. I remember Montgomery, Alabama, and Texas. Wow. And, on my birthday, my 25th birthday, we were in Memphis. So I went to Graceland and saw nice. Elvis's house. And yeah. It was a great experience. I think we made 200 bucks a week <laughs> and uh, spent most of that on Jack Daniels. Oh, no. And, but uh, but it, was, it was an adventure, you know? Yes, I, I exactly. I 21 or something like that. And, yeah. Uh, so that was my first professional. Oh, uh, yeah, I think that was my first professional. Yeah, I might I might have done something before that, but that was, but that was, that's what I think of when I think of my yeah. first professional. When, so when I talk to other people who are actors, they tend to talk a lot about that. You know, the whole experience of the audition and the rejection. You know, yeah. how did that play on you? How did that impact you or push you forward? You know, it's it's just part of it. You know, it's just a part of it. It's like. You know, Gernard, you know, Gernard. Of Mary course. Carla. We'll, yeah, we'll have oh, him on. I, I, I think we might have had this conversation. I'm just not sure. Mm -hmm. But we talked when we were shooting Four Brothers. Mm -hmm. he, he was Great a movie. new father and I was a new father. Mm -hmm. And uh, and his son, Jason, he said he was out on the playground with Jason and Jason fell down and, and looked at him like he didn't know whether he should cry or what he should do. And Gernard looks at him and says, uh, uh, you fell down. That's a part of it. What are you gonna do now? <laughs> and uh, and I feel like that's the same thing with rejection, you know. It's uh -huh. just like, it just comes with it, you know. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get rejected a lot, and and I did. And honestly, you know, I look back on my work then, and I wasn't that good, you know. I, mm -hmm. I got cast as as thugs and criminals, and I just had to have a mean face and hold a gun and say "fuck you." And uh, <laughs> but there, you know, there wasn't much to it. Uh, yeah, I, 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 uh, but, um, but yeah, I got, I got rejected a lot, but, but you learn, you know, you learn by, by way of rejection. Uh, I did this wrong. I did that wrong. Instead of just being bitter about it. Yeah. You know, I tried to learn from it every time. Do you uh, ever go back and look at who got the part and go, yeah, they deserve yeah, it. You know, I think the best audition of my life I ever gave, um, the reader actually texted me that day and said, that's the best fucking audition I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't get it. And, and the guy who did get it, Hugh Thompson won a Gemini award or something. Oh, wow. for it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I always think um, I'm not a competitive actor. I mean, I want to get work, but I know the talent pool and I know all the guys, you know, I see a lot of the same guys a lot Yeah. over 30 years now. And, uh, and, you know, if a good actor gets it, I'm like, no, oh, he got it. You know, like, that's right. That's right. I'll get it. I'll get another one. And, that's and right. now in Toronto, it's so busy that I'm glad when a good actor gets it because that takes him out for a while. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah that's true. That's true. I guess so. <laughs> leave me, leave me, leave me for the next one. Yeah, no kidding. Um, no kidding. So you talked about Four Brothers. So I think yeah. that was my first Hollywood film that I so, you know, not necessarily saw you in, but Bobby right. saw you in because it's one thing that between the, you mentioned Gennard, we'll have Gennard on another show, but Gennard Burke is another fabulous actor. Fabulous. Fantastic. He was the and, husband and of my, being. Yeah. totally husband of my best friend, Rip, Rip Carlyan. Um, but uh, the one thing is he, um, he always does, like when we catch up, he would be, you know, running down all the different things he's working on. Yeah. And but some of these are movies that won't come out for a couple of years, right? Or sure, 18 sure. months. So that it's all of a sudden I'm watching TV. I'm like, Shannard! Or I'm like, Tony! <laughs> you know? And well, I was like, I don't even... <laughs> just to give people context, Gernard is the guy in The Hangover with Mike Tyson. That's right. And, and I asked him, uh, I asked him what that was like. And he said it was great. And he said part of his job was just to sort of build up Tyson's confidence. Oh, wow. And tell him like, you got this, champ. You got this. Yeah. And uh, and the other thing they told him was whenever Tyson stops talking, just say something. 
That's awesome. So, uh, and he was great, you know. Yeah. I mean, he he's a guy I really admire him. He's, yeah. He's a fan, fantastic actor. What was it like, um, actually, when you guys did Four Brothers? Well, actually, let me let me backtrack. What was yeah. the first yeah. film you did with somebody like famous that we would know that you were like you first, were going, the, you, the you first were big. Fun. Hollywood thing I did was um, Murder at 1600 with Wesley Snipes. Oh, wow. I was 25 when we shot that. And I was the guy they thought was the murderer. Oh, wow. And, uh, so I had some scenes with Snipes and Snipes was amazing. You know, he was, uh, we weren't buddies or anything, but, but he's such a pro. And the, and the big thing I took away from him was, you know, cause they shoot you and then they shoot the other person. So mm -hmm. whenever they shot him, he gave me because they would shoot me first and he would give me everything that he, that he did when the camera was on him. Like he, wow. there was a generosity yes. in that and, and, a, and a, a necessary generosity. I mean, you want some actors are assholes though. They don't want you to look good. They want right. to, they want to look better than you, but yeah, but he, he wasn't like that. He was very, uh, you know, he gave me everything and, and, uh, and, and, and it was great. And, and the funny, and, you know, when I worked with him, because when I was in New York, I worked at the Royalton Hotel for a while mm -hmm. where he stayed. Oh, wow. And, uh, and I said to him, uh, you know, last time I saw you, I was carrying your bags. And he <laughs> said, good for you, man. Good for you. Uh, so it was a great experience, except, you know, then I went to the theater to see the movie. And they had cut one of the scenes I was in, and oh no, you know, there, there's always yeah, yeah. there's always some shit to uh, to uh, to have to deal with. But um, you know, it was, it was the start of you know That's I've right. done a lot of work, yes, like the work that people see versus the work I've done, yeah. You know, like there's Murder at sixteen hundred, and then there was a bunch of shit, and then uh, I mean there was a bunch of, there was some good stuff too, but. But I'm just saying there was a bunch of stuff nobody really saw. Yeah. And then one year I did Land of the Dead, Saw Two, and Four Brothers. And so yes. then all of a sudden I'm in stuff that people are seeing. Seeing, that's right. You know, and um, and and that shit counts. You know, I mean, it's it's uh, it's uh, it, you you can't predict it, but it's but it's how you build a career. You that's you right get into things that people see, right? And on top of it too, it's like you know it, it it's. I, like while my career is of course very different because I'm a consultant, but I think it's the same, right? It's like the work you do, if it speaks for itself, people hear about it and then they call you up the next time they, they have sure. work, for right? Sure. So you want to sure. be able to be, you know, um, seen and at the same time, almost, almost get that fan base so that other people, you never know who somebody knows. Somebody knows somebody. Well, knows somebody. Yeah. And not even a fan base in Canada because because nobody gives a shit, but, uh, <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no star system and nobody's like, Oh, I want to go see a movie. Tony Naples in it. It's like, I would do it. Tony. Who the fuck is that? Um, but the industry <laughs> is watching, you know? And yes. so, so on um, my name is building credibility and, yes. uh, whatever with the people who are going to hire me, not necessarily right. the people who, who are going to see stuff. I mean, in terms of a fan base, I think the biggest thing I've ever done is that these Disney films called Zombies for kids. I think, mm -hmm. you know, the people who know me on this planet are, are 14 and under. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of the industry. Outside of the industry, yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, well, that's wonderful. Because I was going to ask, so when you look at, so now you your, your career started, you're starting to make movies, you're doing films. Yeah. In yeah. Toronto, you're doing lots of, you know, um, uh, series things yeah. like that yeah. and stage With, and, and stage. stage yes please I saw you actually a memory came up the other day when we, Kathy Pearl and I came to see you at the Tarragon seven yeah. years ago yeah, yeah. um yeah um but, but yes you know, that's, in the early days on stage I was I was getting I was I was becoming a better actor all the time yeah you know mm -hmm. I mean each has informed the other uh, yes. film made me more subtle on stage and stage made me more specific on film. Ooh, um, nice. Yeah. And um, so I would do film where really I wasn't doing fuck all except looking like me and, and whatever. Yeah. But I, but I was challenged on stage and growing and growing and growing. Yeah. Um, but on film, I was making money. 
Yeah, and exactly. Now, 30 years later, uh, I get those opportunities on film to be challenged because, you know, I have some I have some credibility, I guess. Right. OK, so let's look at those two of you, too, those apples and oranges. Do you, would you prefer to be Tony, the guy making money or Tony, the guy, you know, really doing great, like really deep work? Well, you, you have to make money. So. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, but I don't. I want to be. If you had your druthers, if you had yeah, your druthers, I want to do good work. You know, I mean, mm. I don't know that I was capable of it early on, but uh, but you know, I I think objectively I can say I'm fairly proud of everything I'm doing now. Um, yeah. In terms of my own work, and and when I'm lucky enough to be cast in something uh, that's really well written and executed, then you know uh, yeah. that, that's amazing. I mean, I, uh, part of me, I'm sure, uh, gravitated towards this in the beginning for a lot of reasons that don't exist anymore. You know, I wanted to be uh, validated. I wanted to be celebrated. I wanted people to clap. I mean, who gets a fucking job where people clap? <laughs> you know, has a plumber ever fixed your toilet? And you're like, oh my, that was, that was so amazing. Good. You know? It's like people are clapping and I'm like, I just did my fucking job. That's what exactly. I'm supposed to do. And they paid me and you're still clapping. Exactly. Um, exactly. But uh, yeah, I, I, I want to be, uh, I, I mean, if you're going to do this, you want to do it right and well. Yeah. And, I, and I'd, I'd like people to think, well, I mean, I'd like people to think I was a decent person, which I've had my moments. Mm -hmm. um, but I, if people say anything about me as an actor, um, I hope that they that I will be remembered as a good one. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm a great one, but I think I'm a really good one. Uh, so I if hope you to be a great one one day, hey, then that's 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 honorable. Yeah. Um, question: So if you look back now, we, we, where you are today, is there was there an experience that you thought, oh my gosh, I'll never work with that director again. This was horrible. Or no, don't name names. But, um, but well, in, you know, in film, I honestly don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and when I was younger in theater, if a director was directing me in a way I didn't like it, I would fight with them. But as you get older, you realize now if a director gives me a direction I don't like, I just say, hey, that's a great idea. And then just fucking ignore it. <laughs> yes. Take the paycheck and go about your business. No, I just don't do what they want at all. And, oh. and then eventually they'll just give up and be like, yeah, okay, that was good. And, yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And say, oh, that's, a, that's great. That's really great. Thank you. Yeah. And tell me, tell me your best, your best favorite acting moment ever. Or um, movie or whatever experience. Yeah, what is I mean, the best? I know you've had a lot, but. It's different at different times. You know, when I was young, it was it, Murder at 1600 was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um. And then Four Brothers was fun because, you know, I'm hanging out with Andre Benjamin in a fucking uh, <laughs> Jeep on a frozen lake and we're yes. just shooting the shit all day, you know? And we're talking about acting and we're talking about- That was about, such a cool scene. We're talking about life and we're talking about different stuff, you know? Because, yeah, that was because, a great cast, by the way. That it was, was a so great good. cast. But for every minute you're on screen, you're there for a week not doing anything, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So we had a lot of time to just chat and, at the time, Andre, 3000, you know, was, uh, he was 28 and wow. Hey Ya had just come out. Mm. So he owned, he owned the planet. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. He was like the simplest, uh, gentlest, sweetest man. And Was that uh, his first acting gig? Uh, no, I think he had done, um, he had done the sequel to Get Shorty. I forget what it's ah, called. Ah, okay, okay. And uh, and he told me he hated it. He he watched it and he felt like he felt like uh, he kind of looked like a fool in it, you know. Yeah. And uh, so he was a little more savvy. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know because he he didn't he didn't want to be exploited or used just for mm. his name. I mean, he's an artist. That guy's an yeah. artist. Yeah. He could he could play all the instruments, and I'm a mm -hmm. big fan of, of his music. Mm -hmm. uh, I told him a story that a friend of mine and I, uh, Randy Houston, we were up in the up in the woods, listening to Outcast Stankonia, 
<laughs> and singing that song, uh, These Hoes. Do you know that song? <laughs> No. Uh, it's, it's from the weave to the fake something to fake nails down to their toes. Ah, ha, ha, ha. We love these hoes. We love these hoes. And so I go, I say to him, can you imagine these two white guys driving in northern Ontario through the woods singing that song? Oh, my God. And he, and he, and he was like very gentle. And he said, uh, yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I hate that song. I refuse to sing on it. <laughs> oh, wow. And I was like, oh, well, well. Who yeah, would do it? Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, so before but, we wrap but up that's this. that's what an artist is. Yeah. You know, he, he's not. Yeah. He, he can't put him, he can't insert himself into anything he didn't believe in or could find. That's right. Behind. No, you that's know? that's totally true. That's totally yeah. true. Yeah. And that's another, you know, it's just like, I'm just trying to always be learning. I think when you stop learning, or when you think you're done, you're a hack. Mm, correct. Uh, and um, I just pay attention to, I'm lucky, I'm really lucky to have been exposed to a lot of great uh, people along the way and uh, and some assholes. And mm -hmm. just sort of take it notes like, do that, don't do that. You know? Yeah. Well, what I've been, I've been totally enjoying, and thank you for always posting on Facebook, you know, the stuff that you're in. Sadly, a lot of the stuff you do in Canada, we don't get in the US right away, sometimes at all. But oh my goodness, I think when I saw you on Schitt's Creek and Baroness mm -hmm. Von Sketch, yeah, I yeah. was, that is such a great show. Both of them yeah, great yeah, yeah, shows. Yeah. Oh my gosh, but it's, it was so funny. I'm like, I know him. Yeah. Well, Schitt's uh, no. Creek was a big deal, you know, it's uh that was um, hilarious. I had auditioned for it a bunch of times and I just figured they didn't like me. You know, they didn't, they never, they never wanted me. And, um, and for that particular one, I remember auditioning uh, because I was supposed to be like a shady guy. And then he turns out he's a lawyer. Yeah. Um, so I auditioned. Oh no, without your teeth. <laughs> with no teeth. And they come to the door and they're like, who are you or whatever? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I take my teeth out of my pocket. <laughs> and I go, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if that's why I got it, but I got it. And then when I got that's there, awesome. I said to Eugene Levy, um, uh, I was like, do you want me to do that thing? And he's like, oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, that's funny. And, and honestly, like Eugene Levy and Chris Elliott, those guys, you know, back when we were in school, I yes. was watching. SMTV they were it. And, they were uh, it. He was on Letterman all the time. And, and Chris Elliott yep. show called Get a Life. And um, these guys taught me what funny was. Yeah. So when I got there, it was one of the first times I've ever actually known my lines when I showed up. Wow. And I said to those two guys, listen, I said, I'm going to be a pro all day, but I got to tell you right now, I'm a huge fucking fan. You guys, <laughs> you guys taught me funny and I'm so honored to be here. And Eugene goes, I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, awesome. I love I them. To, it was only the three of us on set that day. So I got to, you know, sort of chat yeah. with each of them and it was it was uh it was a thrill it was a, yeah. a, a real thrill and then of course as you say people saw it so all of a sudden you know people from different periods of my life are like oh my god i saw you on this thing i saw you on this thing and i'm like yeah, yeah it's, it's great cool. no it's great it's cool. and it's, it was so great to see so much canadian shows making it across across yeah. the border you know we're making, we're making great tv here now. oh my really gosh are. So good. We didn't, we didn't always, but but the last you know five to ten years, yeah. Uh, because we have the actors, we have the writers, we have everybody. We just don't have the fucking money. Yeah. So everybody who can leave does. You yeah. Know, and they go and they go pursue the money. Um, yeah. Now, uh, I'm not talking about the money we make. Like I make great money compared to normal people. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but I don't make great money compared to American actors. I make shit money, you know. Right, right. Uh, but I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I would have probably gone to the states the year that you, Four Brothers, Saw Two, and Land of the Dead came out. It was all one year, wow. two thousand six, I think. And I was like number nine hundred and something on the IMDb 
Really? Rating. Yeah. But I was doing so much cocaine. <laughs> no. I didn't even know what the IMDb was. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, I... Uh, I don't, I don't, I, I'm happy here. I'm happy yeah, in Canada. Yeah. I like this country. I like, I have a, do- a daughter. So, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I don't, I mean, what's, but, but, is it, but is it something where at any point that your agent or whatever might say, Hey, there's a big role in the U S and so you're still open to get, I, get go, I, would, I would go work there and come back. Yes. Yeah. But, but yeah. I, you know, I have no desire to live yeah. there. Yeah. Um, I love this country and I love, uh, Mm. and my life is here, you know, acting, acting isn't my life. It's, uh, it's my job. Right. Um, And I love it. I mean, it's more than just a job, but there's, there's a lot more, there's many more components to my life. So before we wrap up my life. So last question before we wrap up this, this segment. So Mm -hmm. again, with, with the intention of, you know, being a, a voice to, to another generation, if you had to give advice either to your younger self or to an up and coming who's thinking of either doing it, would you, what would you, what advice would you give them? Well, you know, I always tell young actors, go to fucking, go to the States and uh, don't try cocaine. (laughs) Those those, those are the two two. big ones. Two big ones. Yeah, Yeah, those are the two big ones. That is Um, hilarious. But but that's it. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's, that's the career advice. And then, the, the everyday advice is somebody else gave this advice to me every day, do something to become a better actor, mm. read, read plays, read biographies. Uh, if you do voice lessons or, uh, even if you go to the gym, if that's one of the things you have to do, uh, um, just all we watch movies, watch plays, you know, just like you need to do as much as you possibly can. Because if you don't, the other guy is. Yeah. You know, then the next guy is going to do that. And nobody and much, gives a fuck yeah. if you're going to become an actor. You Nobody's waiting for you yes, to become an actor. Exactly. Uh, you know, so you have to work hard. I mean, I think people focus on a lot of stupid shit like, uh, you know, networking or whatever. It doesn't matter how much you network if you're a shitty actor. Like, <laughs> become a good actor. You know? Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's awesome. All right. So let us take a pause for the cause. Uh, don't go anywhere. Um, for those of you watching, click thumbs up below and head over to the next and final segment of this episode. We will be back with Tony Napo in a moment. I love that guy. 